Differentiation is rule-based. Knowing certain basic differentiation rules is enough to differentiate all functions. In this video we discuss most of these basic differentiation rules and we start by recalling that the derivative of a function f at the number x0, f prime at x0, is the limit of the difference quotient f prime at x0 is limit as h approaches 0 of f at x0 plus h minus f at x0 and that difference divided by h. We of course assume that the limit exists and is finite, otherwise the derivative would not exist. We use the definition of the derivative to prove the following differentiation rules. Constant rule says that the derivative of a constant function is 0. Identity rule says that the derivative of the function x is 1. Constant multiple rule, the derivative of a constant c times a function f is a constant c times the derivative of the function. Sum rule says that the derivative of a sum is sum of derivatives. The product rule says that the derivative of a product is the derivative of the first factor times the second factor plus derivative of the second factor times the first fa factor. Quotient rule says that the derivative of a quotient is a denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator and that divided by the denominator squared. Derivative of x to the power p is p times x to the power p minus 1. This is valid for all powers p. However, in this video we discuss this rule only for positive integer powers p. Rule number 8 says that the derivative of tangent of x is 1 divided by cosine squared of x. The constant rule is an immediate consequence of the definition of the derivative. The rule says that the derivative of a constant function is zero. To prove this, we must look at the difference quotient for the constant function. That is uh, the constant function minus the same constant function divided by h. But constant minus the same constant is zero, so this is zero divided by h so this is always zero and its limit as h approaches zero is also zero. Therefore we conclude that the derivative of a constant function is zero. The derivative of the identity function x is one and that also follows immediately from the definition of the derivative, namely the derivative of the identity, fu identity function x is a limit as h approaches 0 of the quantity x plus h minus x divided by h. But x plus h minus x is simply h, so this is the limit of h divided by h as h approaches 0, but h cancels out, so this is limit of 1 as h approaches 0, which is 1. So we have proven the identity rule. The constant multiple rule says that the derivative of a constant c times a function f is c times the derivative of the function f. Here we use properties of limits. Derivative of c times f at x is limit as h approaches 0 of the quantity c times f at x plus h minus c times f at x and that divided by h but c is now a common factor in the numerator. It can be taken outside of the limit operation by properties of limits, therefore this is c times the limit as h approaches 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x and that divided by h. But this latter limit is the derivative of f at x, so this is c times derivative of f evaluated at x and this proves the constant multiple rule. To prove the sum rule according to which the derivative of a sum is sum of derivatives, we start by computing the derivative of a sum by the definition. 
The derivative of the function f plus g evaluated at x is limit as h approaches zero of the quantity f at x plus h plus g at x plus h minus within parentheses f at x plus g at x and all that divided by h. These terms can be regrouped. So this is limit as h approaches zero of f at x plus h minus f at x plus g at x plus h minus g at x and that divided by h. And this can further be written as limit as h approaches zero of f at x plus h minus f at x divided by h plus limit as h approaches zero of g at x plus h minus g at x and that divided by h. This is by the properties of a limit of limits. Limit of a sum is sum of limits. But here, this sum of limits is the derivative of f evaluated at x plus the derivative of g evaluated at x. This proves the sum rule. The computation to prove the product rule is a little bit long, but straightforward. The product rule says that the derivative of a product f times g is the derivative of the first factor f times g plus derivative of the second factor g times f. To prove this, we start with the difference quotient f at x plus h times g at x plus h minus f at x times g at x and that divided by h. This is the difference quotient for the function f times g. Now we write this in the form f at x plus h times g at x plus h minus f at x times g at x plus h plus f at x times g at x plus h minus f at x times g at x and all that divided by h. Here we have added and subtracted the same term namely f at x times g at x plus h therefore nothing really has changed the expression has gotten longer. But this is now f at x plus h minus f at x and that divided by h times g at x plus h plus f at x times g at x plus h minus g at x and that divided by h. As h goes to zero, g at x plus h approaches g at x because g is now assumed to be differentiable, therefore continuous. And this difference quantity for f, f at x plus h minus f at x, divided by h approaches the derivative of f and the second difference quotient approaches the derivative for g. So we conclude that the limit of this as h approaches zero is f prime at x times g of x plus fx times g prime of x. Therefore the derivative of a product is the derivative of the first factor times the second factor plus the derivative of the second factor times the first factor. The quotient rule is actually a consequence of the product rule. It says that the derivative of a quotient is a denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus numerator times derivative of the denominator and that difference divided by the denominator squared. To prove this, we consider the function f. Derivative of f is of course the same as derivative of f divided by g times g, because f divided by g times g is simply f. But now we use the product rule. Derivative of f divided by g times g is the derivative of f divided by g times g plus f divided by g times the derivative of g. This is the product rule applied to f divided by g times g. So now we have an equation. We have an equation from which we may solve the derivative of f divided by g. We first move that to the left hand side and everything else to the right hand side multiply by negative 1 we get derivative of f divided by g times g is the derivative of f minus f divided by g times derivative of g. 
and dividing by g we get that the derivative of f divided by g is g times derivative of f minus f times derivative of g and that difference divided by g squared. So this completes the proof of the product rule. We can apply the product rule to study power functions, so we now know that derivative of x is 1. By the product rule, derivative of x squared is um, derivative of x times x is derivative of x times x plus x times derivative of x, just applying the product rule formally. But uh, derivative of x is 1, so this is just x plus x, which is 2 times x. Derivative of x cubed is derivative of x times x squared. And then by the product rule, this is derivative of x times x squared plus x times derivative of x squared. But we already know that derivative of x squared is 2 times x, and derivative of x is 1. So this is 3 times x squared, which is x squared plus 2 times x squared. We may continue further. Derivative of x to the fourth is derivative of x times x cubed. Use the product rule here. It's derivative of x times x cubed plus x times derivative of x cubed. We now know that derivative of x cubed is 3 times x squared. Derivative of x is 1. So this results to 4 times x cubed. And so on. The general rule is that the derivative of x to the power r is r times x to the power r minus 1. This follows for positive integer values r by mathematical induction using the product rule rep repetitively. But this rule is valid for all power functions. We will uh, prove this later. For the moment, uh, proving this rule would be rather tedious. We will use powerful methods to prove this rule by alternative means.